Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss the topic is how to create a sandbox, how to refresh an existing sandbox, how can we clone an existing sandbox and what is the need of cloning existing sandbox and how can you uh, create a sandbox template, what is the usage of sandbox template. Okay. Before we are going to see this, let's talk about basic protective measures against coronavirus. So please follow WHO website for latest information how you have to take care of yourself from coronavirus. Stay aware of latest information on COVID-19 outbreak available on the WHO website and through your national and local public health authority. Wash our hands frequently, maintain social distancing, avoid touching eyes, nose and mouth, practice respiratory hygiene. If you have fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. Stay informed and follow advice given by your health care provider. Please go through WHO site for more information and stay healthy and safely. Okay. And please make aware of other people also if they don't know. Okay. Please take care. Be healthy. Be safe. So now let's go to our class. So what we are going to discuss today. We already have a class about environments. Okay. In our YouTube channel Salesforce Tech Book. So if you go there here. And I'll show you what it is. So I will give you give you this link in the description also. So this is the video we have already in Salesforce Tech Book channel. If you want to know more about environments, what kind of sandboxes are there and what is production, these kind of information you can get from this video. I'll give this link in the in our latest video description please follow this also before you are going to see this sandbox okay so let's go through this so what we are going to discuss i just say that what is production and what is sandbox you can go through our previous video about all sandbox types and uh, production these kind of things you can go through that so the demo purpose now first thing is how can we create a sandbox and when you create a sandbox, what kind of email notification what you will get? And how can you clone existing sandbox? How to refresh a sandbox? And how can you log into sandbox from production? And how can you log into sandbox individually also? How to delete a sandbox? And what is sandbox template? These kind of things we are going to discuss. So because the main intention here, lot of people are working on sales boards, but they don't get the chance to create or to work with the sandbox management uh, like a creating sandbox and creating uh, cloning sandboxes or refresh sandboxes because this kind of activities will be maintained by other team almost in diff in every project so that's why people may not know how production looks and how can they manage sandboxes, how they are giving you sandboxes, you don't know. Because as a developer, you are working on sandboxes for every implementation, for testing, for training, all these kind of things. Whenever it is ready for deployment, then your deployment team will take care of your implementation and make them available in the production. So, but people want to know how production will be, how can I create a sandbox? So this is very important information you are going to know now. Let's see. So first of all, what is production? Basically, production is also one kind of environment where users accessing business critical data or where a business users are running their business or execute business. It is a live environment for your real time data for your business. OK, so and what is sandbox? Basically, sandbox is a nearly identical copy of a production or you can say test environment which is created from a production. And that's why it is a 
nearly identical copy of your production environment. So what is the need of sandbox you know already? Whenever you want to implement something or you want to prepare a new feature for your business, for your production, then you are going to implement this in the sandbox. Then once it is ready and once it is tested and once it is accepted by business, then you are going to move the sandbox implementations or sand whatever you implemented in the sandbox will be moved to production. So as you know, we have different kind of sandboxes. One is developer sandbox, developer pro and partial and full copy sandboxes. Okay, and it will be useful for testing, developer, development, everything, and then you can move these components to production. You have different kind of things for moving components from sandbox to production. It may be chain sets, it may be ant tool, it may be DevOps concept, it may be SFDX. Okay, so based on organization and project, they will decide what they want to use. Anyway, today our concept is not about the deployment from sandbox to production. It's about how you can create a sandbox. Okay, so let's go to this. How can you create a sandbox? First thing is to create sandboxes, you have to log into production environment. Okay, let's login so before login let's see how so whenever you log in you can see whenever you log into production you will see a setup whenever you click on setup and select sandboxes then you can see the sandboxes information in production okay what kind of sandboxes are available in your production and what are the available sandboxes okay how many sandboxes are available and how many sandboxes are created and what type of sandboxes you created already you can see the information here okay let's go to the production so to open production basically what you have to use you simply use login.salesforce.com okay what you have to use login.salesforce.com Basically, to open to open your developer edition also, you are going to use login.salesforce.com, right? Like that, to log into production also, you just need to use login.salesforce.com, okay? If it is restricted for domain, then you have to know the domain URL and you can use, okay? And if you have single sign-on option enabled also, you can use single sign-on. For now, generally, people are going to use login.salesforce.com. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do this. So let me use my username. So why I'm using my username here? So here I'm going to type now because a lot of history is there in my system. So this is my username for my production. Okay. Now, I am logging into production. Simply, I logged into production now. The production looks like the same like how you see developer edition or sandboxes or anything. Okay, based on your purchase, the features will be available in your instance. The base never be changed in any technology. If you know objects creations or other Apex classes, lightning components, or these kind of things will be same. Okay, so now let's come back to our topic. How can we create a sandbox? Let's go to setup. So as I told you, click on this setup and so in the quick find box, you just need to type sandboxes. So here, see, whenever you click on sandboxes, and you can see the what kind what is sandboxes also here sandboxes are special organizations that 
Organizers means it's an instance of Salesforce again that are used to test changes and new apps without risking damage to our production data or configuration. Okay, and sandbox templates are used to create new sandboxes containing specific data sets. So if you see here, we have developer, developer pro, partial copy, full. As it is a trial production, we have 24 developer sandboxes and one we used. And developer pro, we don't have one partial copy is there and zero available full copy sandbox. Okay, when someone asks you to create a sandbox, if they say full copy sandbox, you can see whether it is already used or whether available, whether you have uh, any full copy sandbox available or not to create, you can inform them if you don't have that. Okay, and <clears throat> if you see here, you have new sandbox option and you have sandbox templates you don't have for now and you can see the sandbox history also. What is there in sandbox history? Here you will have sandbox history. What kind of sandbox create? What is the sandbox created? That means what is the name of sandbox? Test one and who is created here Balaji Malamarpram and refreshed. What is the date? He refreshed. Okay, 16-3-2020 and finished. Refresh. 16-3-2020-734 and activated on 16-2020. This is how Sandbox History tab gives you the information. Now, Sandboxes. So, let's create a new Sandbox. If you already have a Sandbox, so you have Clone, Delete, Refresh, Login options. Okay, let's start our creation of our Sandbox. Click on New Sandbox. And here I am going to use my <coughs> my dev sandbox. Okay, you can give a description like this sandbox will be used for development of Salesforce Techbook project. Okay. So here, if you see here, created from, if you select these things, so to create a sandbox from your production org, select production. If you want to clone an existing sandbox, select the sandbox name. So if you see here, test one is our sandbox, production is our production. If you want to create a sandbox out of production, you can do this. And if you want to copy another sandbox to your sandbox, you can select the sandbox. For now, I'm selecting production. And here you can see that developer, developer pro, partial copy, full copy. It is giving you information also. Refresh interval of product developer one day. Based on your need, you have to decide what kind of a sandbox you want to create. Okay. So if you see here, it will be configuration Apex plus metadata, all users. And configuration Apex plus metadata and all users for developer pro and partial copy. So you can have five days interval, refresh interval. That means you can refresh a partial copy sandbox every five days. Okay. You can't refresh this partial copy before five days. Okay. And refresh interval of full copy 29 days. That means you can refresh a full copy sandbox every 28 days only after 29 days only, not 28. Okay. This is how, and you can see capacity. So the capacity of uh, data, this is a one GB and uh, five GB, same as source. Same as source means if you create a full copy sandbox from a production, that is the exact replica of your production. Whatever the size you have, size of uh, production or space, okay, the memory, it will be the same for applicable for full copy sandbox also. You can have configuration, metadata, all users, along with all records which you select okay all and sandbox template support also will be there and history and charter data you can select history and charter data also while creating full copy sandbox okay for now we don't have any licenses for that and now if you talk about partial copy through partial copy you can get the data 
and you can get the sample data it won't get complete data from the production and sandbox template support also there but you can't copy history and charter data for partial copy sandbox and here in developer pro and developer you don't see any concept of records or data or sandbox template support right so now you know which sandbox has what based on that you can decide if you think the sandbox is only for development you don't need the data if you think there need to be a testing on a sample data you can have partial copy if you think you need to have a performance testing and user training on real kind of environment then you can go with a full copy but for development <clears throat> always people select developer sandbox or developer pro so right now i am selecting developer sandbox here click on next and here you can give any apex class if you have uh, if you want to um, do some operations on the sandbox after refresh is completed you can give that apex class that apex class have post refresh activities you can see that how can you do with the, there is a separate interface which should implement by apex class then you can include that apex class here for now we don't have anything you can simply click on create so now if you see here my sandbox name is my dev and type is developer it is in pending and this is what current organization id still it is pending because it's not created so it can't give you and if you see if there is a location this is cs113 this is the location specific and and uh, and you can see this kind of information in trust.salesforce.com about this when it will be refreshed when it will have a new release all this kind of information so and you can see the description what i gave here now what we know how can we create a sandbox right so once our sandbox is created it will take few minutes okay based on the org size it may take uh, three hours also sometimes there is no guarantee uh, so once it is completed then how it looks like so it will send a notification like this if you see that we already have one sandbox test one right so test one is ready to use once it is completed once refresh is completed it will send a message with the subject is sandbox name and is ready to use okay and your new sandbox is test one like this and it will give you login information also along with the username okay when you click on this then you can go to the username okay it will give you username if you see here your uh, then your login is okay user at company dot domain dot your sandbox name okay let's see how it looks like so right now it is in progress okay so how can you log into sandbox now you already know now how to create a sandbox once it is created we will get notification we can see and now let's go to our next step so here if you want to clone existing sandbox how can you clone okay so you just need to go to the existing sandbox under sandboxes again in production and clone simply so why do we need to clone why can't we create a new sandbox okay so because if you clone the existing sandbox what is going to happen whatever the development done by developers it will be copied automatically into that sandbox also for example you have team a team b team a is working on and team b came into the picture they want to have the development whatever team a developed into another sandbox until that day then you just simply clone 
then it will give you all the configurations and development and sample data also what they created what developers created in developer sandbox i mean based on sandbox okay let's do this so here i am going to clone test one sandbox clone so just i'm clicking clone only test one clone okay and click on you have chosen to clone a developer sandbox cloning a sandbox creates a sandbox of the same type okay so when you create a when you clone a sandbox it creates a same kind of sandbox what is the meaning of it you are trying to clone a developer sandbox which is test one it will create a developer sandbox which is test one clone that is the meaning of it next create simply now you know how to clone a sandbox right now next what is there so how to refresh you can refresh a sandbox here by clicking on so as it is in a clone mode you don't have clone uh, refresh option once the another sandbox is cloned completely then you will get the refresh option why do you need the refresh refreshing the sandbox see whenever your production deployment is completed you want to have a fresh copy of sandbox to give for the next release development then usually as the best practice people will refresh your sandbox okay and it comes uh, with all the components and uh, uh, configurations from production with the fresh configurations and the production from uh, configurations and features from production after release okay that is the need of refresh you always need to refresh you always need to refresh a sandbox after release but few in few projects they don't refresh always instead they will depend on the uh, different concepts like uh, branches and they will they just need uh, they just need to copy all the code to their boxes sandboxes but you should not uh, do that you should not avoid refreshing the sandbox even after six months okay you should refresh your sandboxes at least once within six months and even you can uh, refresh three months okay this is the best practice always okay it's a based on your project you can uh, uh, think about refreshing your sandboxes either for after release or after few months or something else it's based on the project and the project size and the project decisions okay but you know what is the interval um, you have to you have to refresh a sandbox if it is a developer it is one day you can refresh every day developer sandbox you can refresh developer pro sandbox also every day but if you have the partial copy you can refresh every five days okay uh, if it is a full copy sandbox you can refresh after 29 days only based on that you have to take the decision now let's go to this is the refresh okay if you click on refresh it will refresh complete sandbox indirectly it will create a new sandbox with the same name nothing else okay now if you want to log into the sandbox from production let's see so this option the login option okay so even so who can log into the production uh, who can log into sandbox from production whoever creates a uh, sandbox in production he only can log into the sandbox from production okay click on login so if you see here it gives like this and this is the username okay so my user dot sandbox name okay now password when you create a new sandbox okay the password of new sandbox will be the password of production only okay that means when you create a sandbox it gives you new a username with sandbox name 
and it has same password you don't need to worry about that send uh, salesforce didn't send the password how can you how can i log in you have to use production password simply after that you can change okay let's see So it goes to my email verification. Okay, let me see. Okay, see, it looks like same like a production, but it is a sandbox. See here, it's a sandbox. So if you want to log in normally, how can you log into sandbox? Okay, you just need to use test.salesforce.com. Okay, this is how you can log in. So you just need to use test.salesforce.com and then your username of your sandbox then password okay so then you can log in so to log into say uh, test box you just need to use test.salesforce.com to log into production you have to use login.salesforce.com so let's go with this and from here you can develop or you can configure something and you can move these things to production through different methodologies so let's go to production again where we are Okay, see it's pending still it's activating basically once it's activated completely then we will get an email So let's do this Let's wait that so next what is there? So how to log in sandbox test.salesforce.com easily and you can delete the sandbox also by clicking on delete button Okay and what is sandbox template so this sandbox template come into the picture when you are going to create a partial copy sandbox or full copy sandbox okay so because partial copy sandbox can have a sample data from production and full copy sandbox can have a complete data from production there so sandbox template will be useful for for which kind of objects you want to get or you want to copy the data from production to the sandbox okay let's see let's go here new sandbox you can create a template first and can create a um, partial copy sandbox or full copy sandbox or otherwise you can create a sand uh, template while creating a partial copy sandbox or full copy sandbox here my partial or you can say you wait this will be used for UET testing and production partial copy sandbox so no templates exist in here for this organization so that means you have to create a template first so let's go to this first let's create a template go to template new template so here it will ask so template and for what objects you want to get the data okay campaign 
and uh, cases if you want and um, contract event like this and you created a object selected this one so done so that means what you were trying to say uh, here you created a template which has nine objects to be copied from production nine objects data okay usually all configurations will be copied from production to any sandbox but for partial copy or full copy data also will be copied okay that's why you should have template now let's go to the sandbox click on new sandbox you wait this will be see now next button is available because we have template this will be used for uvt next okay you are going to select template here so create so here you have the preview these are all the objects data will be copied that is the meaning of it okay but all objects configurations will be uh, copied from from production to sandbox this is this template will be useful for which kind of objects data should be copied to sandbox and now done so now you are creating a partial copy sandbox okay now we already uh, salesforce already completed creation of my dev sandbox okay let's go to our email okay let's see where what kind of email we got so let's open salesforce textbook So as I told you, so once sandbox is completed, you will get this. See, my dev is ready to use. Okay, this is how it works. So let's go this. You just need to click on this. Okay, then it will give you username and all. So what is the username here? So we just need to append this right usually it will give you username so if you take this Lanchi Malema Puram gmail.com dot de dot my dev this is my username and as I told you you have to use the same password So see here, it gave all these things. And if you want to see the instructions of uh, subscriptions and all, you can go through the trust dot trust salesforce.com. Okay. So See here, we have a verification code. Two, five, one, eight, nine.
okay this is how we can log into um, sandbox okay and we can start working on sandbox as usual so now you can go through the references for uh, sandbox creations or uh, something else and what is sandbox template and uh, what is the best practices we have to maintain the sandboxes also you have here and there you can have this PDF also so like if you go to this so you have very good PDF from Salesforce how sandboxes will be maintained so if you click on this so here see here so they already give on very good PDF about uh, sandbox management what is the best practices to main maintain sandbox everything is there okay after this session you go through this PDF also I, I'm going to give you the link where you have this PDF in our description you can go through that okay best of luck all the best so please subscribe to our uh, channel Salesforce tech book and share with your friends also for sharing the knowledge all the best <laughs>